Hey everyone, my name is Tori and today's video is going to be my April, May, and June empties. There's so much, so let's just get started. Okay, jumping right in. So I'm just gonna pull things. They might be in random order, but I will do my best. So this first one is the Knep, Kneep, Kneep, Mineral Bath Salts Joint and Muscle Arnica. So this is, I mean, you know, it's a bath soak, bath salt. I got it on Amazon. A lot of, I heard a lot of people raving about this on YouTube for like, it was really great for muscle pain, joint pain, that kind of thing. I think it is, but the scent of this is very strong and there's like a really intense yellow artificial coloring in it. So I don't know if the scent, the fragrance is completely natural, but I know that the coloring is not. So just something to note because you are soaking in it, if that's something that bothers you. However, I, I don't think this is really any different than like an Epsom salt that you can get, you know, at the grocery store. I don't think I would pay the $20 to get this again, only because I just don't think just for me personally, it didn't do anything more than what regular Epsom salt does for me and for my, like for sore muscles and that sort of thing. Um, I do think that it worked, but I don't think it like changed my life. So I probably wouldn't buy it again. I would like to try some of the other bath salts though from that line, so I am curious. I don't know, it gets a lot of really good reviews. Next up, I have a CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion. I have gone through several of these. I absolutely love this lotion. It is lightweight, sinks in really quickly, very hydrating, fragrance-free and just very gentle on your skin. Does a really great job of hydrating um, without feeling greasy or sticky or gross. Absolutely love this. This is like my favorite lotion of all time. Um, I've already repurchased it. I bought the value size this time. So I go through these pretty frequently. Next up is a giant size purity made simple one step facial cleanser. This is the 32 fluid ounce one. Um, I got the one with the big pump on it. I think I bought this from, I'm pretty sure I got it at Sephora. Um, it took me exactly a year to use up. Really great for removing makeup for just, I mean, just a regular face wash in the shower. I am using a CeraVe cleanser in the shower now because it is fragrance free. I didn't have any issues with this one, but I have heard some people experience irritation with the fragrance in it. So I don't know, I'm trying to eliminate fragrance from my skincare, specifically like on my face. So I don't think I'm going to be repurchasing this, at least not now. Um, I'm gonna see how I feel about using the CeraVe face wash in combination with the cleansing oil for makeup removal instead of just this. But if fragrance doesn't bother you, this is a really great product. I've used this for years and I've gone through so many of them. Next up is a self tanner and this is by the brand Saint Tropez and this is the Advanced One Hour Tan Bronzing Mousse. Yeah, so you can leave it on for one, two, or three hours, kind of depending on how tan you would like to be. I usually always leave it on for at least three hours or I'll, I'll even sleep in it sometimes. Um, you get a pretty similar result from three hours versus if you sleep in it. I'm actually wearing the tan right now. This is freshly applied. I know maybe for some people I don't look super tan, but for me, this is very tan. It does give you a nice kind of tanner glow. I don't think it's like as dark as I would like for it to be, but I sometimes I'll layer this, so I'll do I'll do it one day for three hours, wash it off, and then the next day I'll do it for three hours, wash it off. This is just one application, so sometimes I like to layer it, and it does fine layering, but I do really enjoy this product. You do get a self-tan smell. I haven't used a self-tanner that doesn't have a self-tan smell, but I do really like the, co the color that it gives, and I've already bought another one. This is one of my favorite self-tanners. Okay, we've got three Bath & Body Works Gentle Foaming Hand Soaps. So I have two Strawberry Pound Cakes. I actually think I purchased these in the last semi-annual sale. The fragrance notes in here are fresh strawberries, golden shortcake, and whipped cream. You already know this is my favorite. I absolutely love it. It's fruity, it's fresh, it's sweet, it's delicious, it's perfect. Love this so much, would definitely repurchase. Um, and then I have an Almond Blossom. This was a newer fragrance to me, but I bought a few of them, so I really like it. Fragrance notes are Almond Milk Coriander coriander and vanilla sugar. It's really sweet, but it's not bakery sweet. You have that vanilla, but it's not overpoweringly sweetly sick vanilla. Sweetly sick, whatever. You get it. It's it's sweet without being like too much. This is a really great, I think, unisex kind of fragrance, like something I would put in a guest bathroom. This is what I put by my husband's sink. Friends and family that come over really like it. So I really love this fragrance, would definitely repurchase. Used up a Bath & Body Works Vanilla Be Noel Confetti Moisturizing body wash. So I bought this during the holiday season, maybe semi-annual, but back in like December, January, I think. I love the moisturizing body wash. This one had confetti in it. So it was like little, little granules. I don't even know what they're made out of. I don't think that they were completely necessary. They were like red and green confetti. And I don't think they were like exfoliating or moisturizing. It was just kind of weird. I would prefer there to just be 
Oh, they're not red and green. They're just green. Oh, anyway, <laughs> I would prefer it to just be the moisturizing body wash, like without the confetti in it. I just feel like that was an added ingredient that wasn't really necessary. This is pretty hydrating. It smells good. The fragrance notes are fresh vanilla bean, sugar cookies, warm caramel, whipped cream, and snow-kissed musk. I really like to use this formula during the winter season, like when it's colder and drier outside. I do find that it's a little more hydrating than the regular shower gel, and it smells really good. I also really love the packaging on it. It's just, I thought it was so cute and Christmassy. On that same note, oh, this looks crazy. <laughs> this is the Bath & Body Works what is this? Whipped confetti body scrub in the fragrance vanilla bean oil as well. The fragrance notes are the same. Um, smells really sweet and warm, um, like a vanilla caramel sugar cookie. I think it smells better in the moisturizing body wash and the shower gel than it does in this scrub. I feel like the scrubs smell just like a little plasticky to me. And usually, just my personal opinion, they do. Anytime I get um, usually I'll get like one scrub around the holiday season and I'll either get it in Vanilla Bean Noel or Twisted Peppermint and they always smell like the fragrance but like with plastic. So it's not fantastic. But I also think this is really expensive. This is $16.50 which like you can get it on promo. I think you can get it um, like a buy three get three or you can do um, they go on sale during semi-annual but I still think that's really expensive for like a body scrub, a 6.2 ounce body scrub. I don't know, just my personal opinion. This had the confetti bits in it as well. It was red and green along with like the sugar scrub. Thought it was exfoliating. It did what it was supposed to do, but it didn't like blow my mind. It was just fun to use because, you know, Christmas. Ooh, I have a Bath & Body Works shower gel in the fragrance Twisted Peppermint. So I, I think I ended up using or finally using up all of my holiday stuff like in April, like March, April, I think. Um, the fragrance notes in here are cool peppermint, sugared snow, vanilla buttercream, and fresh balsam. So it's like if you took a sweet candy cane peppermint and then added a little bit of musk to it, that's what this smells like. It's my favorite fragrance to use during the holiday season. I love Vanilla Bean Noel, but Twisted Peppermint has my heart. I am getting to the point though, I only like Twisted Peppermint pretty much in the shower gel. Like that's it. I feel like in all the other forms, it's it just doesn't smell good. It smells plastic and weird. In the candle, I'm just over it. I don't know what it is. I think it's just too much now for me, but I still love the shower gel. So would definitely repurchase, excited to repurchase. Next in here is a CeraVe moisturizing cream. So I actually got this giant one, it's 16 ounces, and it came with a pump on it. I got it at Ulta, I think. Um, I ended up buying an even bigger one when I finished this up off of Amazon. I think it's 19 ounces. It looks like this tub, it's just a little bit bigger. So I put the pump from this one on that one. This is what I use on my face every single night as my moisturizer. I also will sometimes use it in the morning as my moisturizer as well. Even though it's a moisturizing cream, I don't think it's too thick. It's like, it actually soaks into your skin it keeps you so hydrated. It's fragrance free. It's really gentle, especially for sensitive skin. I just love this so, so much. There's like, I've been through so many of these and I'm already on my next one. And I'm just like, I can't say enough good things about it. I don't really like jinx myself here, but like, I don't really have a need or the urge to buy like another moisturizer at least not right now. This just works so well and it's also, it's more inexpensive. I mean, when you buy like the bigger ones, they can get more expensive, like $20 and over. They last for a pretty long time. I'm using it every single day and it's a ton of product. Instead of, you know, going to Sephora and paying like 60, 80, $100 for like a high-end moisturizer that you get barely any of it. I just, this just works so well and it's more inexpensive and you can get more and I just don't really have a need to use anything else. <laughs> so I absolutely love this, would totally recommend this. Speaking of CeraVe, I have another CeraVe product. This is the Value Size Foaming Facial Cleanser for normal to oily skin. This comes out like a gel and it foams up as you rub it into your face. It's really gentle, it's fragrance free, all the same things, right? I use this every single morning before, like right when I wake up, I just wash my face with this first. I will say this is really great for, like it said, normal to oily skin, it kind of, it takes off all oils and, and anything that's on your face without making it feel like squeaky clean. But I will say I have the, I'm using the hydrating version of this cleanser right now just to see what the difference is. That one comes out looking more like an actual, almost like a lotion, um, like a lightweight lotion. It doesn't foam up the same way, but it does leave your face feeling a little bit more hydrated. I do think between the two, I think I like this one better, but if you have very dry skin, I would use a hydrating one. And then again, if you have like normal or even combination oily skin, this is perfectly fine. This is a great, great daily cleanser. It's very gentle and I just, I just 
love it so much and it lasted a long time 16 fluid ounces another CeraVe product <laughs> this is the acne foaming cream cleanser with benzyl peroxide so I actually got this because my husband really likes to use this if you're trying to incorporate benzyl peroxide into your skincare routine but you it dries you out or you have like sensitivity to it I would definitely try this um, his dermatologist actually recommended it specifically and I feel like it's it's a it's a gentle approach to benzoyl peroxide you know so very gentle acne cleanser so if you're looking for something that has an active ingredient that's not going to dry you out it's not going to like make your face freak out in any kind of way i would definitely recommend this one love this a lot would definitely repurchase probably will repurchase pretty soon all right next up i have a neutrogena oil-free eye makeup remover i've been using this for years and years and years there's like a cvs version and a target version and maybe a walgreens version it's literally the exact same thing it's got like the oil in it you shake it up to mix it up this is great works well perfectly fine i am using a um like a makeup eraser like towel you see you know where you like get it wet and you can remove your makeup without any makeup remover I've actually been using that um, I used to use this in combination with that but you really don't need to um, you can just wet the makeup eraser and it'll take your makeup right off um, so I think that's probably the only reason that I wouldn't repurchase this just because I don't I don't use it I don't need it anymore but I really like this and would totally recommend it speaking of makeup removal this is the yes to cucumbers soothing hyperallergenic all right, hyperallergenic face wipes. <laughs> I love these because there's this little plastic door on it, so the wipes inside stay nice and moist and very wet and saturated. <laughs> I don't use makeup wipes every day like I used to. I now use a cleansing oil and I'm using that makeup eraser. So I'm trying to cut back on, you know, single use makeup wipes. I do keep some, I use them like every once in a while. Uh, for just various reasons and um, so I like to have some but I'm not using them every single day like I used to as like the first step of makeup removal so this is definitely something I would repurchase I think it's a great product um, it's just something that I'm not using as much anymore next up is a dry shampoo and this is by the brand Batiste and this is the coconut and exotic tropical fragrance so this smells like a coconut tropical vacation it smells so good does have a white cast which isn't I mean that's not bad for me because I have blonde hair but if you have darker hair this might be a little too white in your hair when you like if you spray especially if you spray it too close it does rub out pretty well but you can kind of see a little bit of that white cast smells really great does what it's supposed to do it's inexpensive I really love this product I have gone through so many of these I do think they make one for specifically for brunettes and or redheads so if you're interested in trying this and you have not blonde hair, I think they have options for you as well. So love this brand, would totally recommend it. And you can get this big bottle at like Marshalls, TJ Maxx for like less than $10. Love that. Next up is a body cream. It's from Bath and Body Works. It is strawberry pound cake. We love this. Are you sick of hearing me talk about this yet? <laughs> um, fragrance notes, strawberries, golden shortcake, whipped cream. Smells good, smells fresh and fruity and vanilla-y and delicious. And it makes you smell like a cupcake, like a fruity cupcake. Oh, it's so good. It's good. It's perfect. If you haven't tried it, you should. Okay, we know. All right, the next thing in here is a travel size of the Sol de Janeiro Coco Cabana Cream. So this is like the Boom Boom Cream bum bum cream boom boom cream but it's in that coconut fragrance and I actually got this as the Sephora birthday gift a year ago I don't remember some people say that this smells like buttered popcorn to them and I originally when I first smelled it I think maybe because I just had it in my head it smelled like buttered popcorn to me but um, the more I use it, I'm like, no, I think it smells more like coconut, just to me personally. But I could definitely see where people would think it smells like buttered popcorn. <laughs> the formula of this was weird to me. It was a little more like a jelly consistency. It sunk into the skin really well, like pretty quickly. Um, the smell was, was nice on my skin, but like it left a weird film. And I don't know if that was just because it was a travel size. It just didn't feel the same way that um, like the original yellow Boom Boom Cream does. And, and that stuff like I absolutely love and I have used up like a whole thing of it and love it obsessed right the yellow one the boom boom cream like the original leaves your skin feeling really soft there's like no weird film like everything's great and, but this one was just kind of weird it made my skin feel just weird like there was something gross on it I don't know so didn't really love that I don't know if that's just because of the trial like the travel size and the 
I don't know. You know, sometimes it gets weird with like the travel size versus the big size, the original. Anyway, so not my favorite, probably wouldn't purchase full size. I would just go with the original. Next up, I have a sunscreen and this is the second one of these I've been through. This is the Kylie Skin Broad Spectrum SPF 40 Face Sunscreen. So I actually put this in my, I think, best of skincare for 2020. I'll link that up here in case you're interested in seeing that. I absolutely love this. Um, I've never tried the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen, but I've heard it's pretty much exactly the same thing. Comes out clear, it looks like a silicone primer, but it blends out on your face super quickly and really evenly and easily. And it's just my favorite. I love the sunscreen. I love that it's SPF 40. I love the ease of application, all the things. It doesn't smell weird. You can't see it at all. Pretty sure it's a chemical sunscreen, um, which is why you can't see it, like it's invisible on your skin. But I've had no irritation when I put it around my eyes. And sometimes with chemical sunscreens, it'll burn my eyes. This one doesn't do that. It plays really well with makeup. It's just like the perfect sunscreen. <laughs> um, I use this every single morning before I put on my makeup and I absolutely love it. I take it down my neck, backs my hands. I've also taken this hiking with me and I've reapplied it on my hands and on my face, like on the trail. Um, I love that it's kind of compact and it's like easy to reapply. I will say, I don't think this is water resistant specifically. It even says back here, it says use a water resistant sunscreen if swimming or sweating. So if you are going hiking, like I was, you would need to reapply it. If you're going swimming, that sort of thing, it's gonna come off. But I think if you're just needing a facial sunscreen and like neck hand kind of sunscreen for just daily use, like going to work and living your life, it's so good. And it's $29 for 1.7 fluid ounces. That price point, I still think the price point is too high, but I know that the super group one is more expensive and you get the same amount of product. And it's basically the same thing. So this is less expensive. You can get it at Ulta with the 20% off coupon. I actually bought this one with points, I think. So I don't think I'm going to repurchase it only because I'm currently using a CeraVe one right now that is less expensive and the same amount of product. And I think really that would be the only reason why I wouldn't repurchase it. It's just because this is twice as expensive, you know, but I love it. <laughs> Next up, I use up a bronzer and I say use up a little loosely because I think I have about like a little bit of time left on this, but I wanted to go ahead and just put it in my empties to talk about it. So when I use it up, I can just kind of move on. So this is the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, and this is in the shade bronzer. So they've actually since expanded the shade range, which is awesome. Um, and I don't remember if it's either bronzer or light bronzer. One of them is warm and one of them is more like neutral. And I can never remember which one is which and I just alternate between the two shades. I've used up several of these. It just applies so evenly and smoothly. It's just nice. It's a nice bronzer. So you get a mirror in here, but you have this little sponge that like I don't understand the purpose of, I've never used. Um, so it'd be cool if we could just kind of like cut that off and then make the packaging a little bit smaller, but has a fragrance, but it smells like it smells kind of coconutty, uh, just like a tropical vacation. I'm getting to the point though where I prefer my makeup products to not have fragrance in it. Moving away from uh, foundation or things that go all over my face that have fragrance in it because I think my skin is becoming just a little more sensitive to that. Maybe it's age, I don't know, I don't know. So anyway, all of that aside, if you are sensitive to fragrance, I would not recommend this for you, but the actual product itself is really nice and it performs like a high-end bronzer. I will say, I think it's a little expensive for what it is though. Physicians Formula is getting up there in price. I mean, they have been, but like when I go to repurchase this, I'm always like, dang, like it's like 15, $16. That's a lot for a drugstore brand. I don't know. Um, but you can always get it at Ulta with a coupon, like the 350 off or um, like 20% off. And usually that's what I'll do when I repurchase these or like a buy one, get one kind of thing at the drugstore. Anyway, love that bronzer, would definitely repurchase it. And then speaking of Physicians Formula, I have a Eye Booster Ultra Fine Liquid Eyeliner in the shade Ultra Black. This is the regular one. So they have this one and then the waterproof. I think I prefer the waterproof, which is crazy for me because I don't like waterproof makeup at all. I say that. It's mostly just because mascara. I don't like waterproof mascara at all. I'm like convinced it makes my eyelashes fall out. I prefer the waterproof version of this eyeliner because it's just blacker. It's darker and juicier and I feel like a little bit easier to work with. The formula is a little more, slightly more liquidy, but not to the point where it's like NYX Epic Ink, like liquid all over the place, skipping like crazy. This is a brush tip liner. Just nice, you get really nice control. You get a nice crisp black line. Yeah, I really love this. I've used up so many of these, but now I prefer the waterproof version. 
Who would have thought? Next up is a brow product that you've seen a million and ten times. This is the e.l.f. Instant Lift, Lift Brow Pencil in the shade Taupe. I love this brow pencil. It's only a couple dollars and um, it works well. It's what I'm wearing my brows today. It's what I wear on my brows every day. I, again, I say this all the time every time I have this in an empties. I still love the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz, but I just, I don't want to spend 20 something dollars on a brow product. So I go through these about once every month or two, kind of, I mean, depending on how often I'm wearing makeup, but you know, I just don't want to repurchase a brow product that's that expensive that often. So. Um, I'm already using my next one and I will continue to repurchase this. Next up is another brow product. This is the NYX Control Freak Eyebrow Gel. So it's a clear brow gel. I use this to set my brows in place after I fill them in with the e.l.f. brow pencil. This is fine. It's just like, it's just fine. Brush looks very similar to the ABH Clear Brow Gel, which is my favorite. That stuff is like super glue for your brows. This is like not as strong of a hold. It's still fine. Like, it's fine. It's, I mean, it's less expensive, but I do think that it performs not as well as its higher end counterpart, I think. It's one of those things where it's like, again, I do think the clear brow gel from Anastasia Beverly Hills lasts me longer. So I, spending like $22 on that and getting several months of use out of it, maybe more than I should, is, feels a little bit more reasonable than spending 20 something dollars on a brow pencil once ish a month. I really want to get the ABH Clear Brow Gel because I just feel like it's just the one that I like. It's just, it's what I want to use. It holds my, I have like really long brow hairs and it holds them in place really well. I don't know. I'm trying a Makeup Revolution one right now. I've tried an Essence one and I'm just, I'm trying to find a drugstore one that I really enjoy that like really compares to the ABH one and I just haven't found it yet. So if you have any brow gel recommendations from the drugstore, I'd love to know what they are. Please leave them in the comments down below. Next up are two mascaras and you're going to be surprised because these are not my normal mascaras that I usually go through. Um, I have the Maybelline New York, the Falsies Lash Lift, and then I have the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara. So these were the two mascaras that I was using over however long, a couple months. I... I will leave my Maybelline Sky High like wear test and review video here. I always layer two mascaras and it's usually the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I do that first and then I layer it with the Maybelline Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect on top. It's my favorite way to do my lashes. I'm trying to branch out. The Falsies Lash Lift I think is fine. It's fine. Like I... I mean, it's fine enough to where I bought a second one. It looks like the L'Oreal Lash Paradise wand. It's like that thick fluffy wand. I do think you get pretty good volume from it. I don't think it's as good as L'Oreal Lash Paradise though. So I think I would purchase the Lash Paradise over this first. Now, the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara. Listen, this has the really long rubber bristle wand and it's super flexible. Okay, so if you watch my video on this, I talk about how you'll, I mean, you'll see it happen. Like I use just this mascara on one eye and then I use my normal combo on the other. They look almost identical. So I was really excited. So I was like, oh my gosh, like I can just buy one mascara now and not two, like a crazy person. As much as I liked the way that my lashes looked while using this, I cannot get over the application of it. I don't like it. It's just the wand, that's all it is. If this wand, this wand could be exactly the same, but if it was stiff, like if you couldn't move it at all, it would be great. <laughs> but it is so bendy that you have like no control and I would get it all over the place. I'm already a messy mascara like applier or whatever. And I would just get it all over the place and I just, it was frustrating. I poked myself in the eyes. I can't get, I can't get in there and get control of it. and. For that reason, I just, I can't repurchase this. It's so frustrating for me to use. I mean, it's not that serious if I had it, like it's fine, but I just don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. So I'm <laughs> I'm back on my OG Lash Sensational um, Full Fan Effect one just cause the wand is shorter and it's stiff and I can get way more control with it. So that's literally the only reason I wouldn't repurchase this. If they came out with this wand and it didn't move, I would totally buy it. And it might be the only like mascara that I could use. Like I could just use one. I was so excited. <laughs> but yeah, I was pretty disappointed by that. It's great if you can get past the applicator. I use up the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation. Mine is in the shade 120. So I use this whole thing up and still don't really know how I feel about it. And I feel like that's exactly the reaction that I have when I use the Fenty uh, primer as well. It, I mean, it's just okay. It's just okay. Like it's pretty, it's very lightweight, but I felt like when I had dry patches on my face, 
it clung to the dry patches it just wasn't very flattering on my skin, which is weird because it's supposed to be hydrating, but I just feel like it wasn't, it didn't do me any favors. It wasn't really great. It wasn't really bad, but I don't think I would buy it again. If you have like normal skin and no dry patches, no blemishes and like a light layer of this, I think would be beautiful. But for me, you know, I go back and forth with my combination skin. I have like some active breakouts and then I'll have some healing breakouts that are drier. I have dry patches, especially in the winter, sometimes around my face. Um, like flakiness and things like that and this just like didn't really do me any favors so one of those things like i would use it if i had it it was just very like eh. you know <laughs> for a high-end foundation i wanted to like blow my mind you know all right last three things i have three candles this candle i know it looks like there's some in here but it burned itself out i kept lighting it and it kept going out so this is the bath and body works vanilla snowflake candle and i feel like this fragrance can actually work year round because it's like a coconut vanilla um, it reminds me of Christmas because I usually burn it during Christmas time. Like that's when it comes out, but it's very fresh. It's, it's like a clean soapy vanilla. I like this candle in the small form. I think I've decided I really don't care for it in the large three wick. It's just too much, but in this like little baby one, it's great, especially when pairing it with like other candles. I really, really enjoy it. It's actually one of these like little tester candles that they put out with the wallflower bulbs. So you can smell what the bulbs smell like. Um, and it went on sale during a semi-annual sale, like probably too long ago. So I've had this for a long time. So I was really happy to burn through this. The next candle I have is called Merci Beaucoup. Um, I actually don't think that's what it's called. I think it's called, yeah, Capri Citron. <laughs> um, this is Sorrento Lemon Citron and Agave Nectar. So I loved this colored glass. I just thought it was so pretty and it matches my house. Um, and it smells like the like pretty much identical to the volcano candle at anthropology and then like with the glass it's just like basically the same thing i think they may have repackaged this and named it something else i think it's called is it sunwash citrus i think because i think i have that candle because i like this fragrance and i like wanted to repurchase it and i think they just renamed it but it's the same candle this is a really great summer fragrance i will say though by the end of this candle i was pretty over it it's very strong it's pretty overwhelming if you let it burn for too long and i think i just got tired of it but it's a really nice candle especially if you're looking for a volcano dupe this is it like spot on and then my last empty candle is from bath and body works it's a three wick in the fragrance strawberry pound cake so i love this candle we know this we all know this we're sick of hearing it it's fresh strawberries golden shortcake whipped cream it smells so good i love this packaging too i just thought it was so pretty when it was lit it's just like this pretty springy pink color i'm starting to prefer the single wick candles of almost all the fragrances at bath and body works so i can let this burn for a little while and then i just feel like it's really overwhelming for me once i burn out and burn through all of my three wicks i think i'm just going to start buying the single wicks because that's just what i prefer now it's a little bit you still get that fragrance it's a little bit softer and it's not as strong and overwhelming but this is so good. <laughs> so those are all of my empties. I have one more thing I want to talk about. I've used quite a bit of this, but it's not fully empty, but I have to get rid of it. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer. This is actually in the shade Cashmere. So this is a little bit darker for me. It's like my self-tan shade. So I was using this for a while and I really enjoyed it. I thought it worked really well. It has the big doe foot applicator. So it's very similar to like a a tart shape tape kind of thing. It's pretty full coverage. It blends out nicely, wears really well. I was like, oh, this is great. Like I found an amazing drugstore concealer. Like why would I ever buy tart shape tape again when I can get this one? You know what I mean? But it's fragranced and I don't know if that's why, but like it burns my eyes now. And I don't know if it's because I've had it for too long. I think, I feel like I've only had it for maybe a year. I mean, I guess that's kind of long, like in concealer makeup world. But I mean, it started to burn my eyes and I used this, I used it a couple months ago. It actually burned the skin under my eyes. It just felt like it was stinging. Um, and I have no idea if that's like an ingredient that's in it or if it's the fragrance. Cause it's weird because I was using it when I first bought it and didn't have any issues. And then like however many months later I started like picked it back up to use it again and it started burning. So I don't know what's up with that. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm kind of nervous to try it again because I don't want my eyes to burn and it's fragranced and it's like going really close to my eyes. So I feel like that's probably not a good thing. Also something else that's weird is in the same line, the L'Oreal Freshwear 
fresh wear, 24 hour fresh wear foundation is like really heavily fragranced as well. And it's the same fragrance as this. I think it's making me break out. Ah, which is ugh, like the worst because the foundation is so good. It's so pretty. I've used more than half of it. And I don't know if maybe it's been breaking me out this whole time, or maybe I'm just noticing it, or if it's like over after a certain point, like it, then it starts breaking me out. I have no idea, but it's start, I'm pretty sure it's breaking me out now. So I have to stop using it, which makes me really sad. I, I want to know like, why do we need the fragrance? Why? Like we don't need fragrance and concealer and foundation, right? I just, I wish they would reformulate it, take the fragrance out and then I could try it again. So I don't know if that's why, but it, I feel like it probably is. Okay, we made it. <laughs> Those are all of the empties from the months of April, May, and June. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.